Hi everyone, this is Cheryl Abram and this is my Epiphany channel where we talk about everything from about learning, development, talent development, evaluation, and other things related to that. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe and tell somebody about it who you think may be interested too. So today I'm having kind of like a unorthodox, you know, kind of talk with you. It, the title of the video you see is Non-Duality Richard Pryor NLP Talent Development and Eulogies. Yes, all those things are related. So last night I was going through one of my Facebook groups. Uh, it was, it's called, uh, it's actually a page, a Facebook page. It's called Non-Duality in Everyday Life. And I have another Facebook page and group called called Firing God. So I don't really um, do anything in the on those pages uh, or in that group anymore. I started them about four years ago. Um, but as I was going through it yesterday and I was reading a lot of the stuff in there, I thought, you know, I need to bring this more explicitly into what I'm doing. Okay, so non-duality is is. It's pretty simple. It's um, it's defined as you know there there are not two things, right? There, and that's simple. That's it. Just leave it there. There are not two things, which does not mean there's one thing. It just means not two. And um, so, you know, in my book Firing God, I talk about why I came to see things that way. I didn't even know what it was called, you know, before. I, I just knew that something had changed in my perspective for, you know, for uh, various reasons. And I, I wasn't sure what it was. Okay. So in going and investigating and talking to people and looking at videos and stuff like that, I found that, oh, that must be what this thing is that I'm seeing and experiencing. Um, I come to find out it's not really that either, either, but that's another thing. But at that time, I was very active in those groups. I, I was excited, you know, because I had a different perspective. I was learning things differently. I was seeing things differently. I had different definitions for things. As if you've looked at some of my other videos on Epiphany, you see that that's the case, right? I've redefined all kinds of things. And you've I've only done it on these videos as the tip of the iceberg. Like there's a lot of other things that I see differently. So the stuff that I say regarding learning, development, talent development, evaluation, it sounds weird because that's not the way we talk about it right now in the profession, right? Because I'm coming from a totally different perspective, you know? So I, I, I see these things differently, I think, which is good, okay? Which is a good thing and is what I kind of talked about in my video on decolonizing evaluation. I talked a little bit about that. So uh, back then, after I wrote Firing God and I wrote, you know, a couple other things, I was working on this book called Life Without a Witness, because what I was noticing is that uh, my work was changing. You know, I, I, my personal life, you know, was changing as well. But, you know, you kind of have like that. They, we call it work life balance or work life integration. It still seems like two separate things. you got your work. And you got your life. So what you want to do is you want to balance the two or you want to make sure they're integrated in a way. I wasn't seeing that. Like there was no work-life balance, work-life integration, right? What was happening for me is that because, well, I don't know, I don't know if I can say because, but um, around the same time as this thing was going on in my personal life with my relationships, you know, and my work was emerging from that, okay? So it was no integration or balance. It was the work that I'm doing in evaluation and talent development was um, was being born out of, out of the stuff that was going on with me in my personal life, you know, so that I couldn't, I, there was no line of demarcation. I couldn't say, this is my work and this is my life, right? It, would, it was all work. Or it was just all life, you know, it was just, it was all work or all life. It just, there was no, there was no line. Okay. So when, so my videos and a lot of the writing that I do shows that, 
Okay. I, and I, what I've been trying to do was to keep it separate. Okay. So this is my thing for this. And now I'm going to have over here, you know, my group for that thing, but I can't, I can't anymore, which is why I stopped posting on my firing God uh, group and in my non-duality in everyday life group, because I, everything I was saying is just what I was saying. You know, and and so what I decided to do was just, you know, do it, you know, through my work, you do it through my work. But I but life without a witness was just about that. It was about what does non-duality, what does this new perspective, you don't have to call it non-duality. What is this new perspective that I have? How uh, what what does it have to do with anything? You know, like what what is OK not to. You know, you're seeing all of these. stuff. So what does that have to do with the fact that my bills still have to get paid? What does it have to do with the fact that, you know, my relationship sucks? What does it have to do, you know, with 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 the fact of, you know, my, my children got to go to college. I'm working all this time. You know, what does it have to do with that? <laughs> you know, What difference does it make? That's something that we ask all the time in impact evaluation. What difference does it make? OK. So Epiphany, this channel, the stuff I talk about here, and the things that I write about and share on LinkedIn and on Facebook is the difference that it makes, okay? Because it does. It absolutely does make a difference, right? And instead of right, so in Life Without a Witness, I was going to write about that. You know, this is how my everyday life looks through a non-dual lens or through a lens where I fired God. Okay. And firing God means that I fire my absolute belief and trust and um, confidence in my various belief systems. Okay. So I'm by firing God, I allow myself to question what I know for sure. Okay. That's what that's about. And again, when you look at my, my videos, the evaluation videos, the stuff that I write about unlearning evaluation, that's what that is, right? I had a certain belief system set up about the work I was doing, okay? So one day what I did, just like I did in my personal life, right? When I questioned all those beliefs that I had in my personal life, I questioned those, those things in my, in my work life, you know? And I said, okay, is this true? You know, is the way that I've been doing evaluation, is the way that I've been learning, is the way that I've been telling people about learning and development, is that true? You know, and not really not looking for a yes or a no, but just being really curious, you know, being, you know, being willing to observe and look and see without any judgment. Okay. I really wanted to know, like, is that the way it really is? And what I found that the answer isn't no, and the answer isn't yes, but the the answer is it could be a different way, you know. And in this way, this is what it would look like, right? So that's that's what I'm sharing here. And for for my non-dual crowd, you know, which is why I'm going to put this video on my firing God page and my non-duality for everyday life page because I want you all to to join in to and to hear because I'm going to be talking about more than. Um, than the work for which I get, you know, monetary gain, you know, my, my work I get paid for. It's, it's other work that I'm doing, you know, that has where this perspective, you know, has a real impact and makes a big difference, you know, in what I do and how I see myself talk, you know, all of that. It, make, it makes a huge difference in all that. So I am a certified hypnotist, at least as of April of this year, I think I got to go back for some continuing credits, uh, certified hypnotist, right? And of course, which which also has a lot of impact on the way that I see and I talk about learning development and evaluation. Um, uh, okay, what was, yeah, hypnotist. So in uh, hypnotism, we learned a little bit about NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, okay? And I love it. I absolutely love it because it really, and that that's just, um, 
uh, you know, it's really about using about the language and behaviors and, and how, you know, and emotions and things that we could actually physically do to help influence the way we feel and, and, and think about things and ourselves and stuff like that, right? It sounds really touchy feely, da da da, but it's real, right? The same way that somebody did something horrible to you 10 years ago, you think about that right now and you get upset and mad, your heart starts racing and you can't eat and all this other kind of stuff. It's the same thing, right? You think about something in, in a, a different way, right? So that you choose to feel a different way about this thing or see it in a different way, okay? So it's just as real as you getting mad and upset about something that happened to you two weeks ago, okay? So because it, it kind of, it, um, it bothers me, you know, when people say this thing is so woo and it makes no sense and it's all this, that, and the other thing. Listen, I wrote a book called Firing God, all right? I used to be highly involved in that stuff, right? But the thing is, is it's not about abandoning one belief, you know, and holding on for dear life and not letting go of another, right? It's really about allowing yourself to, to see, you know, allowing yourself to see other kinds of things and, you know, imagine and consider other possibilities as long as you ain't hurting nobody, you know, like physically or you're suppressing somebody with the way that you believe and all this other stuff. So, um, so one of the things before I end the video, I just want to say really quickly, one of the ways that this perspective has influenced the way that I work in, in, in learning talent development and evaluation is really the way that I see learning. I'm telling you, <laughs> the, way, the way that I see learning is so different. Like it really is compared to, to the way that I have been working in the past, okay? And, and the way that I've been seeing it in the past. I see learning as something that's physical, right? Um, it's living and breathing, physical living and breathing, which means evaluating learning has to be that same thing. You can't bring a dead thing to something alive and try to evaluate it, you know? Evaluation has to be living and breathing too. So I told um, some of my colleagues, um, Evaluation reports, when you look at these reports and you read them, and I've read many, many, they sound like eulogies, right? Like here lies the career development program. Everyone was satisfied. You know, this many people came and, you know, it, it, it allowed these people to find mentors and this is what it did. You're talking about it like it's dead. You know, we're asking questions of it like it's gone, it's past, you know, it's 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 dead and gone, right? But it's not. If it if it's dead, it's dead, okay? If the program is done, it's done. But many of these programs that I deal with and I see, they're not. Like they're they're running, they're going on. So why can't we talk about it like that? You know, why can't we ask questions? Why can't we get there in in the program with the people in there? And, and talk about, you know, in which ways is it vital? Where's the vitality? Where's the excitement? You know, where are things, you know, moving the way they should move? What kind of processes are going on right here? What is the program itself telling you? You know, what is it, what is it there for, right? When you ask about what is a program for, you're not talking about the objective. You're talking about right now, what is this program doing? Like, what is it being used for, by people for? And that's a totally different picture than when you're looking at um, whether or not it's meeting its objectives. And um, so that's something I can talk about also uh, a little later. But right now, what I'm going to share with you all, you know, I'm in this video, but I'm going to, I'm working on uh, evaluation criteria for a cybersecurity program. And I'm going to show you some of what I'm talking about here, how learning is, is alive, it's living, it's, you know, it's a living process. So evaluation has to be just as much of, of, of a living process as, as that is, okay? Uh, and I'm gonna share that in another video again. So I'm gonna put a little bit of what I said down in the, the little notes here. Uh, so you have that, but again, I'm sharing this, you know, I want my non-dual peeps as well as my learning development and evaluation people to really converge and come together on this thing because we, you know, this is a different language. Something I, I'm constantly saying is that with, with practice, you have to speak differently. And this was in several books. Like I think uh, Tim Leahy wrote a book, The Way You Talk Defines the Way You Think, something like that. I'll, I'll 
uh, put the correct title uh, down down here uh, under this video. But and also Peter Drucker said, um, you know, uh, with with theory, every theory, every practice has a theory. Every practice has a theory, right? So what I'm talking about, the way I'm talking about doing evaluation as a living thing, seeing learning as a living thing that's going on, right? That's not delegated to anybody, you know? Training and learning are two different things, okay? Just because you're training doesn't mean somebody's learning anything, but okay. Let's leave that there for now. Um, yeah, so so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna show examples of that, but I want I want us to come together and really be a part of this you know, together because learning is the perfect place to talk about perspective and perspective shifts and and growth and maturing, you know, in 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 the way that you think and act. I mean that that's what learning is, right? Everything learns. It doesn't take a human mind to learn, right? I've said that in another one of my videos, right? You know, everything that matures learns. So, so let's, uh, you know, I think this is a really good, you know, marriage of the groups, you know, for us to, for learning and development professionals to get into, you know, the, um, you know, non-dual and, and group and groups like that doesn't have to be non-dual again. Like anybody who's interested in growing into your possibilities and, and knowing that you can, that you're not stuck, you know, even though you may feel it. I felt it sometimes, but you're not. You're absolutely not stuck, and I'm not stuck. Okay, and um, this this channel is one way, you know, that I'm showing that I'm not stuck. Okay, so uh, that's it for today. I didn't want this to be too 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 long, but uh, so thanks for listening, and uh, stay tuned for the next video on on um, those evaluation criteria. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.